what's good, fight fans? It's your boy, Marcus Los Great, here to give you what you want, here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Gloves Off Podcast. Your first, your last, your everything, and all that is combat sports. We are coming to you live, straight from your mama's basement, in a crispy, I said crispy, white tea. We are powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. If you didn't know, now you know. And just in case them feds is listening, all thoughts and opinions of the Gloves Off podcast are the thoughts and opinions of Mr. Marcus Lowe's great and in no way, shape, or form represent the thoughts and opinions of IE Sports Radio. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 36, and boy, did we have a treat last weekend. Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder for all the marbles in their third fight. Beautiful. 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 I believe it was the greatest heavyweight fight I've ever seen. Why? Well, due to the action. It was strictly based on action. You know, you had Deontay Wilder. Come out into the first round, establish himself with the jab, with the game plan. They were going to work, and he won the first round. He set the tone for the rest of the fight. He was basically saying to um, to Fury that I'm here, I'm ready to fight, and I'm coming for my belt. Second round. Fury took back over the fight, started to move around, box off his back foot, had lots of success. It appeared that we were heading down to the same type of fight that we had in the second fight, which was a complete annihilation of Deontay Wilder. We go into the third round. Deontay Wilder goes down. Further cementing that this is about to be a wash. Deontay Wilder gets up. He goes into his corner. Malik Scott, his head trainer, is there. He calms Deontay Wilder down. He tells Deontay Wilder, we have worked, we have prepared for this. Let's do what we came here to do. And I promise you, I promise you, if you do what you came here to do, you will be happy. You will be proud of what you do to uh, what you do tonight. Deontay Wilder gets off his stool. He goes back out there. He puts Fury down. Not once, but twice. We have a fight on our hands. I'm screaming. 
I'm yelling. I'm screaming. I'm saying, finish him. Finish him. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. The wife is wondering why is there so much noise going in the front room. <laughs> I truly, truly believed that the fight was going to end right there. Tyson Fury was saved by the bell. We go into the fifth round. Deontay is still putting in that work. He wins the fifth round. We go into the sixth round. Fury starts getting back into the fight. He starts you know, moving around, working off his jab, you know, countering Deontay, pushing Deontay against the ropes. He's doing whatever he wants at this point. But Deontay Wilder is still in his fight. His will will not allow him to give up. He continues the fight off the ropes, throwing haymakers, Answering back every time Fury comes at him. We go into the seventh and Deontay is dropped again. Many of us believe that this fight is going to be over soon. But Deontay Wilder has other plans. He continues to fight from the seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth round on sheer will and and willpower complete mental stamina we go into the 10th round and Deontay Wilder is knocked out the fight is stopped but Deontay Wilder still gets up but the referee has called it off. He has gone out on his shield. This was the greatest heavyweight fight I've seen in a long time. It was everything that I wanted it to be. I got two fighters in a ring duking it out for mere pride to call themselves champion. Champion. That used to mean something in this sport. When you were a champion of this sport, it used to mean something. And these two guys showed us exactly what it meant. There's a line in the wire when Avon is talking to Slim Charles and Cuddy decides that the game was no longer, you know, the game for him anymore. He was no longer cut out for the game. And Slim Charles says, he was a man in his day. And Avon looks at him and he tells, he tells Slim Charles, no, nah, he was a man today. Deontay Wilder was a man this weekend. He tried to come back and capture his gold. He, he believed in it so much. That he went out on his shield. He gave us every ounce of him this weekend. And that's all that we could ask for as fans. That's all that we can ask for. He gave it to us this weekend. He showed us championship level pride. He just came up short against the better man. And there is no there's no shame in coming up short as long as you try. As long as you give everything you got to reach your goals. That was a life lesson this weekend. That was a life lesson this weekend that said no matter what Go for what you want in life. Go for what you want in life. You know what I'm saying? And if you come up short, 
dust yourself off and live to fight another day. Just because you fall short doesn't mean you stop. Doesn't mean you quit. You keep pushing towards that goal line. You keep pushing because as you inch closer and closer, eventually you will reach your goal. Now, this weekend, Deontay Wilder didn't reach his goal, but Tyson Fury did. Another time, Deontay Wilder is going to reach his goals. That was a beautiful fight. It was fantastic. I want to give a shout out to all of you Twitter haters who basically said that there shouldn't have been a third fight. You couldn't have been more wrong. You couldn't have been more wrong. This is the reason why hardcore fans, for the most part, don't know what they're talking about. We got, out of these three fights, some of the best fights in heavyweight history. Some of the best moments in heavyweight history. That's what we got out of this. And I say thank you. I say thank you. It was fantastic. It was everything I wanted it to be. Everything I wanted it to be. I didn't know that I wanted it to be this way. I know that I wanted it to be a good fight. I know I wanted Deontay Wilder to recapture his belt. But I think Deontay Wilder, without capturing his belt this weekend, regained something even more in defeat. I think he showed the boxing community exactly who Deontay Wilder is. Who he is inside. What lives inside him. And no one can be upset with that. No one can be disappointed with that. I wish Deontay Wilder the best. He was fantastic. He did everything we wanted him to do this weekend. He just came up short. Tyson Fury is a beast. He is a beast. And the heavyweight division goes through the Gypsy King. Now, outside of the fighters this weekend, I want to highlight another person. I want to highlight Deontay Wilder's trainer, Malik Scott. Because I believe that he had the second biggest night outside of the fighters. I think him becoming Deontay Wilder's trainer... Many of us questioned if that was the right move. We've seen situations where fighters will get friends as trainers. You know, previous boxers as, you know, as their trainers. And it just not work out. Just because for one, one, one thing or another, you know, basically they're just not uh, capable of putting together a game plan for the fighter and executing on that game plan. This weekend, not only did Malik Scott come up with a game plan, but that game plan was almost enough to take out Tyson Fury. That game plan that he put together was exactly what Deontay Wilder needed. It was the first time and De- Deontay Wilder's career that he went into a fight with an actual game plan and tried to execute it to perfection. The first time. And as a rookie coach at this level of the game, coming in, fighting against the number one heavyweight in the world, Malik Scott showed a true accountment of his 
training acumen. I won't be surprised. And Malik Scott, from this point on, is in many of the corners and many boxers that are coming up in this game today. I won't be surprised. Because what he did for Deontay Wilder this weekend, they almost did the unthinkable. They almost accomplished greatness. Now, take the the equation take that out of the equation of, you know, the knockdowns in that in the fight. The fact that when the fight wasn't going their way, the fact that Malik Scott was able to calm Deontay Wilder down, he told him, take a breath. Let's get back to doing what we said we were going to do here. Let's focus on that jab to the body. Let's get him to bring them hands down. The fact that he was able to do that showed he is he is ready. He is he is ready for the top spot. He is ready to be a top trainer in this game. I believe that he outshined Sugar Hill in his fight in the training corners. Sugar Hill's fighter did win. But I also believe that Sugar Hill had the had the better fighter. That was a fantastic, fantastic accountant of Malik Scott. Great game, great game plan. Great game plan. I like the fact that they wanted to go to the body. I like the fact that they were using that as a decoy so that Deontay Wilder could land his mighty right hand easier in this fight. I like the fact that Deontay Wilder came in heavier in this fight. Many of you guys have said that that has played against Deontay. That, you know, the oxygen and the muscles use a lot of energy. Blah, 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 blah. You're absolutely correct. I can't go against science. You're absolutely correct. The muscle mass did utilize a lot of energy. And it may have hurt Deontay Wilder in his quest to become champion again. But this isn't that that isn't the reason why he lost this fight. That isn't the reason why he lost this fight. He needed that mass. He was in the ring with a man who was 280 pounds. If it wasn't the muscle sapping his energy, it was going to be Tyson Fury leaning on him, taking that energy. The fact that he was able to get Tyson Fury off of him early in the bout allowed him to be as effective as he was throughout this bout. So, in my eyes, I believe that the muscle mass was a double-edged sword. It was a double-edged sword. And he needed it. He's in the ring when a man that weighs 280 pounds, he's leaning on him, he's wrestling with him, he's grappling in it with him in the clutch, in the clinch. He's got to do something about that. He's got to do something about that. And the only way he can, you know, basically do something about that is by, you know, being a bigger man. 
So, yes, I, I will agree. The muscle mass did hurt Wilder, but I also believe that it helped Wilder as well. I don't believe that that's the reason why he lost the fight. You know, I can be wrong. I will also say that Malik Scott displayed great corner control. You know, I th thought he provided Wilder with great instructions. Not only instructions, but telling him, you know, basically in ways that made sense to him. You know, of what he wanted him to do. I believe that that led to Wilder knocking down Fury twice in the fourth round. What do you guys think about sportsmanship? Are you guys upset with Deontay Wilder for not shaking Fury's hand at the end? If you are, that's ridiculous. And I'll tell you why. Before this fight started, while the referee was giving the instructions in the middle of the ring, Tyson Fury hurled an insult at Deontay Wilder. He called this man a bitch. He said, bring your bitch ass. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> Now, he called this man out of his name, and you have the audacity, even though you win, to think that mean you are shaking hands? You lucky I don't put hands on you in this corner, man. <laughs> the nerve of Tyson Fury, man. <laughs> he knew how this was going to look. <laughs> he, he, he's smart enough to understand the optics. <laughs> No way, no how, man. You call me a bitch before we get into a fight. And you end up putting your hands on me. You put your paws on me, right? I lose, right? And you expect me, after, we, after, after we, we're done doing what we do, to dust myself off and to shake your hand and congratulate you on a good, good night. No, sir. No, sir, no way, no how. Not, not going down. I understand 100% why Deontay Wilder did what he did. Now, I don't blame either fighter in this instance. You know, it was bad blood in this. You know, there, there's, no, there's no reason to have sportsmanship at the end of this fight. You just go about your business. You go about your day. You know what I'm saying? There's no need to shake each other's hand. You know what I'm saying? We're just happy it's over. And we move on. And we go into the sunlight with our, with our families. You know what I'm saying? There's no reason for me to shake your hand. There's no reason for you to shake mine. <laughs> no way, no how. You don't disrespect me and then have the audacity to expect me to shake your hand afterwards. I'm not cut like that from where I'm from. After after that, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the level of disrespect was on the level of spitting. The level of spitting. That's the level of disrespect that happened in that bout. We can't be we can't be friends after that, man. You know what I'm saying? We can be rivals, but we can't be friends after that, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we just can't do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not cut like that. You know, maybe, you know, maybe in another lifetime I might be the bigger person one day and be like, you know, yeah, I, I, I can see myself doing that, but not today. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> uh, so what's next for these fighters, man? I believe that 
Tyson Fury is the number one heavyweight in the world. Does he, you know, does he fight Dillian White next? Does he vacate the WPC heavyweight title and go across the pond, his hometown, and um, fight the winner between Anthony Joshua and Oleander Usyk? You know, I believe that's it. That's his next. I think believe that's his next move. You know, at this point in time. His whole goal is to be the number one heavyweight. And the only way he does that is to be the unified champion. And in order to be the unified champion, unfortunately, he's going to have to leave the WBC title behind. He's going to have to leave it behind. Because if he doesn't, He's going to be stuck in the ring with Dillian White. And then after he beats a Dillian White, guess who's going to be ranked again? Number one contender, Deontay Wilder. So he's going to have to cut bait. He's going to have to cut the WBC belt loose. Let Deontay Wilder and Dillian White duke it out. For the undisputed WBC heavyweight championship. And he can go for undisputed. Against the winner of Usyk versus Joshua. Once he establishes himself. As the man. Because he's already the man. We, he's the man without the title right now. But once he does, because neither one of them beat Tyson Fury. Neither one of them beat Tyson Fury. You know, once he fights them, beats them, wins the title. He can retire. But what's next for Deontay Wilder? You know, I believe that Dillian White is what's next for Deontay Wilder. You know, I found it funny that Eddie Hearn says that Dillian White would smash Deontay Wilder. I mean, he is the promoter of Dillian White. So what was he supposed to say? Do we expect him to say that his fighter would no, would not have any chance of beating the number two heavyweight in the world? You know what I'm saying? Do, would we, do we expect him to say that? I didn't expect him to say that. If he was on my team, he wouldn't be allowed to say that. I don't care if I had no chance in hell of winning. You better say your boy Marcus is going to win, man. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You better say your boy is going to win, man. <laughs> uh, so I expect I expected that out of Eddie Hearn. The truth of the matter is, is that Dillian White proses no challenge to Deontay Wilder. He doesn't have the boxing ability of a Tyson Fury. He doesn't have the IQ of a Tyson Fury. And he's not as big as a Tyson Fury. All three of those categories equal an ass whooping at the end of the day. An ass whooping. That's what he would receive against Deontay Wilder. He would be knocked out cold. Mind you that in his last fight, Dillian White's last fight, before he won this, this last bout, he was knocked out cold by a 48-year-old Panakovich. You know what I'm saying? He was knocked out cold. If that man could touch him, Deontay Wilder could touch him. You know what I'm saying? Outside of Dillian White, the only other opportunity that I see for Deontay Wilder is Andy Ruiz. 
They're signed to the same promotional company. They're managed by the same manager. That has the makings of a legit fight. Now, for those of you guys who forgot who Andy Ruiz is, Andy Ruiz is the same guy who knocked out Anthony Joshua. That would be a solid fight for us. Any one of those fights would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me to bless your speakers, your earbuds, and your headphones tonight. Thank you for listening to the replay. And be sure to share with a friend. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, Apple Music, and Spotify at Gloves Off Boxing. Send all questions, comments, and concerns to me via email at glovesoffboxing at gmail.com. This is your boy, Marcus Los Great. I'm out. I'm on to the next one.